morning. Afternoon, actually. Just going to pour my tea. One second. Hello Louise, this is literally my first cup of tea of the day. I've had coffee, but this is tea. Irene, Mary Ann. God, this is so exciting. Heather, hello, morning, afternoon. Hello Judith, Jules is watching. Hi. Did any of you see my little teeny test video? Yeah, I just did a very, very small test live video to make sure that my iPad, I did actually take a few apps off that seemed to have filled up with data. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Beth. With a little question mark in a box. Good. If you missed it, that's good. Well, anyway, I, was, I said in my thing... Um, I'm thinking irises, and I am thinking irises, and we will, hello Yvonne. I can hear rustling, but there's nobody here, apart from the television man. I can hear footsteps and rustling. Hello Dawn, you tried but lost it. <laughs> Look. How exciting is that? Just the one. So I have got some iris thoughts. Aren't they gorgeous? And I've got this painting that, that I started putting some irises on. So we'll do a little bit to that, but I don't want to go and ruin it in front of you. Hello, William. Thank you. I like an ooh when I show pictures. Um, they're my new brushes, so they need to be in a pot. Oh, that one doesn't have anything on it. Doesn't say like poison. I cut these poppy buds yesterday, but they're looking a bit sad. I think what they need is to be put in fresh, I think it's warm water right up to their necks and that brings them back to life. What is the painting? You finished off. Ah, oh, thank you, Carolyn. Somebody got in touch. They're quite keen to buy it, but not when they found out the price. It's, it's quite a big painting. I got an emoji that was a bit like this. Back. That's not really what they're meant to be like. Anyway. I've got everything I need here. Look. That's really kind of you to say that about the hens. I, that painting, wait there. Don't go away. I sort of feel that you were very much part of this painting, which is an odd thing, it really is. It's like every part of it, uh, I will think about particular, like, ramblings that I was doing. How do you value a painting? Good question, William. Um, size, history. Um, you know, for instance, in your line of business, you are fairly early on in your career as a trainer, I would guess. Um, and so you might not charge the same as somebody who, like Blythe Tate, possibly. And it's a bit the same with pictures. You have a reputation, you can command a certain amount, amount and um, you just gradually sneak it up. And that's how I've done it all through my career. And there are lots of people who say, oh, 
oh, I bought a lovely original and it only cost me £30 or £50 or £100 or £200. And I just think, I always say to them, that 50 quid will have meant probably more to me back then than, um, than it does now. No, but, it, you know, every single sale was, like, massive. And it's all relative. I always say to people, I get lots of artists sort of say, you know, how do you do it? How do you make a living? Da di da. And um, when they ask about pricing, I always say, I, I saw that Marianne Ray. Marianne Ray just said, you have a reputation, all right. And I feel that if she was here saying it, she would say it like that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, I'm not going to look. So, uh, yeah, I, I always say, oh, now I see I've lost my thread. Paintings. Yeah, when I'm talking to, you know, people who are sort of stepping out on their career and, you know, wanting to sell work, I always say that you can't go far wrong if you start low and then gradually work your way up. I've been to so many exhibitions of work by artists who, you know, they've been to university and they've done their degree and they've got themselves a studio and they've done a whole load of work. They whack it up on the walls um, for pots of money. Give me one second, sorry about this, but it could be my mum and it's her birthday today. Hello, happy birthday. Mum? Stupid old bag. I've been trying to ring her all morning and I'm quite sure that she's just right, not put the phone back properly on the hook. So, of course, everybody thinks she's dead, and she's not. Everyone thinks she's had a fall, and she can right, reach a panic button. Uh, 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 and she'll just be lying with her finger inches from the panic button. Uh, and she won't be. She'll be away buying chocolate eclairs in Sainsbury's at the end of the road. I've tried her on a mobile, tried her on a landline. I expect you'll hear my mobile ringing. And she does no respect for my commitments. I've told her, I said every day at 12 o'clock, I do live painting and stuff. Right. Or I just yak. No, I had a brush, which I'd selected. Was that it? Right, I'm going to do a little tiny bit of the detail that makes these irises just so gorgeous. And then... I'm going to start one. So we're going to go back to front. Right, look closely at that. There's no way of me putting it there and painting it, I don't think. But what I always look at, um, I've, I've got the basic bit of painting done, and I'm looking at the details. So those veins and the veins on the bud, they really make it jump out. Right, she's going to ring me back, I'm sorry. Happy birthday to your mother. All the best people. Is it your birthday, Jen? Happy birthday if it is. Right, tippy tippy. Hang on to your hats. Right, can you see it? No, you can't because it's so far up the page. I'm going to have to. Oh. Yes, you can see it there. Okay, so I've got some blue there mixed up which I'm painting these veins on but when I look really closely at the at the veins on this bud which is where I'm going next no I'm not I'm going to do something else I'm going to bring the bud down getting some green I cannot afford to make a balls up because this represents hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of painting. It's got fluff on the end. I'm 
And that brush is too fat. I'm just going to get a thinner one. Okay, just needed to do that really. And it's done two things, it's kind of put that iris bud where it should be and it's also defined the top and the bottom of that petal. Uh, where's that little thin brush here? So I'm going to do the veins on there. Hopefully. I can't see anything, so I can't see any of the comments or anything. And as ever, I always think if you've got the actual thing in front of you, which I have, luckily, then that's great. I have made a cake for my mum, which she'll complain about. She'll say, oh, you know I don't eat anything sweet. In front of people, that is. That's a good job, she can't work out how to use Facebook, that's all I can say. It's been quite a busy morning. I've got um, the blacksmith here because the horse's uh, shoes, I had, the, I had the back shoes taken off the mare because she kicks the other one. And she did a nasty, gave it a nasty injury maybe about a month or so ago. So I got him over just to remove her back shoes. Well, really, we want to be getting them fit again now. So, um, I was out on my little gelding this morning, which was nice. And the man has come to tune the telly, which I bought ages and ages ago, and it's just sat miserably. That's okay, I think. I'm going to tip you up now because I th think... Oh, it's made my face red. Veins give so much... Annabelle Remnant! In answer to your question regarding my husband's health, I think he might have a thyroid thing going on. Helen's watching. I hope you haven't poisoned it. I hope you haven't poisoned it. I hope you haven't. Poisoned what? I've missed some of the conversation. Right, so the veins. Um, I don't know if you can see where. It, yeah, the veins on that bud are okay. Now then. And now we're going to do one of our own. And I got a piece of paper. Do you remember we did that the other day? Right, then paint on the back. Um, and I've got my beautiful irises here. The cake. No, no! Poisoned it? Certainly not. I just wish she'd answer the phone when I ring her. Right, sorry, I've just got to quickly drink some. while well, I choose which iris is going to be my, my model. Oh, they're so lovely. Right. Brushes. Here we are. New brushes. Mmm. Oh. Now there's my phone going to change. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get some fresh water. Because for this, you've got to have completely fresh water. 
not like slightly grimy water. <laughs> Glass pinched from outside a pub. Right. I just wish I, I could put one in front of you at the same time. Poor Fifey, you need to... I don't think so, Sir Jules. No, I just bought an oriental poppy plant for my garden. Well, don't expect to be painting it any time soon. Right, tippy tippy. <laughs> You'll know me so well. Right, oh God, I wish I could see. There we are. Right. I'm gonna turn that that's a good one. Right. So I've got everything ready because obviously in this lovely, lovely warm weather, things are drying very, very quickly. Right, so that's clean fresh water. And I'm using the lovely blue paint from Ludlow Colours. Interesting. Hmm. Not what I expected, this paper. This is the Fabriano 5 that I was telling you about the other day. Sometimes when I want to dry the brush, I just dry it on my clothes and then regret it later at my leisure. Right, I've got something else to do here. So that's like the, the bottom of the petal and then the top. Ah, where's my yellow? That's a bit. Hmm. There's a there's a little yellow bit right in the middle there, and it sort of bleeds outwards. It's lovely. Um, okay. And then we have another yellow bleed. The barking. Oh, nobody needs me. This is, this is okay. Let's 
So I keep just swapping between the brushes. The brush that has to be lovely and clean. And then the, the small one with the yellow. And I'll just show you something. How lovely is that? Right, where are we? So this is the one. Okay, then we've got these. Can you actually see me and hear me? Uh, oh, the little friends, now she's painting with invisible paint. How's Marv? I've missed a few days. William, Marv, Marv's okay. He's going back to the vet tomorrow for... Sorry, I'm just... He's going back tomorrow... for more fucking tests. I honestly think that they're just milking me for money now. This is like the third full day at the vet. Some of these little details are so cute. I don't know what these are called. Heather will know because I know now about the, at the anther and the filament. They're the gentleman parts of the flower. And the stigma and the stamen and then the ovary on the lady part of the flower. But these funny little... These are like little petalettes, teeny weeny little little petal type things. And then we've got these sticky up ones that are just lovely, like little waving hands saying like, look at me. That sounds like someone departing. Good, I won't have to worry about them anymore. That's nice, I think. Hope you can see all right. So I'm just carefully putting this little teeny petally thing. I'm looking at my flower all the time and what I want to do now while these bits are still wet, add a bit of sort of depth of colour. Oh God, on, I, I was saying, what a morning. Went to, had to go to the post office because this week the post office is only open for one day and one day only. Uh, and today was that day. And yesterday, for some reason, Quite a few people seem to go online shopping to marogers.com and I would advise all of you to go online shopping to marogers.com, obviously, always. And um, as you know, those of you who were here yesterday, I wasn't on my own. I had one of my staff, lovely Lisa, here. And she helped. Anyway, we've got a sack full of orders done, but she's not here today. I'm trying to, I'm gradually, um, you know, that they're, they're coming back in gradually. And I'm hoping I'll have Jane next week. That's not too bad as a start, I don't think. It's quite nice. Right, there's another bit. Still feel like there's somebody in the house. Maybe there is. So yeah, I had to get all this mail because people have ordered cards and whatnot, and they want it, and they want them, and other things. Big things get picked up here by a courier, which is great. So I knew the blacksmith was coming. And I knew Tony the telly was coming. Tony the telly man. And, um, but, and the phone rang and things needed to be done and da-dee-da-dee-da. And, um, 
and it was half past 11. And the post office, you, well, obviously, I've got to be here for 12. Um, but more worryingly, the post office shuts at 12, and then no one, and then that's it. And I think we've all, I think you've all got a bit of a picture now of how things operate at the post office. You know, very well, and it's great that they're there, and it's great what they do. And it's also great that Ildi takes her time and gets things right. But sometimes I'm in a bit of a rush, and it bloody drives me mad. I'm just working this all out. You know, which bit goes where. And then there's another bit. And of course, weren't there two people in front of me who wanted to do chatting? Anyway, I got here. Right. Medium sized brush. No, smaller than medium sized brush. Last night, five people actually watched my my video and he listened to the story about the chickens. And he reminded me of another chicken related story. And he said, oh, they'd love that. But I can't remember what it is. It's like we've had so much death and devastation in our many years of poultry keeping. It's hard to know where to start. Um, it'll come to me as soon as I say goodbye to you. Oh no, I don't like that. I'm just trying to mix up a green that I like. Right, so we've got the got the fern, and the fern, and then the join up here. And then that goes like that. And then there's a, and then there's a, uh, right, I'm just going to, not quite red enough. Okay, swap brushes again. I wish Fifey was here and then I could say, Fifey, what was that really good chicken story that was even better than the swimming chickens? <gasps> I've remembered. I've remembered. If you want to stop people talking, just cough. They soon move. I know it's great, isn't it? If I want to get loads of space in the cough. <coughs> uh, anyway, an audience with the old bag. Can we get five of you on for a guest slot? You did. 
he brought in, do you not remember when he made that fowl on the plate, all that gorgeous like, soda bread? I haven't had my results yet, Mary Ann Ray. Sorry to be late, just got in the postman's. Ah, <gasps> how exciting. I am hoping that the postman will deliver because I need to tell those of you who have just recently ordered sets of Pro Arte brushes that the two inch ones, I never imagined that I would tell so many. Uh, anyway, there's more coming. They should come today. If they come today, God knows when you'll get them, judging on the... I'll maybe take them to Bellingham. Anyway, the story about the chickens. She's an absolute darling. And anyway, I was making things up. My mum. My mum. Everybody loves her. She's really funny and feisty and very, very clever. And she brought up five children. Um, under slightly trying circumstances. Not financially trying, but emotionally trying. Because my father... Uh, who is in heaven, uh, now, well, possibly not, he um, he didn't really make it easy. He, As I say, you know, she had five children and he didn't really like children much at all, especially his own. So um, she did have to sort of defend us quite a lot. Anyway, so, so yeah, she... she <laughs> Had a fairly tricky time bringing us up, but she's very funny and very disrespectful. That's my mother. Uh, right, so the chicken story. How much are the brushes? Go to the bloody website, Helen Henderson. Sorry, everyone. I know you're not used to foul language, but she is. Um, 39 quid for a set. So that a set is like one, two, three, four. And I pay for the postage. And I think that if you Google those particular brushes. You might get them a little bit cheaper somewhere else, but the, the post will be more. So there's five. There's five of you. One, two, three, four, Helen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> five children. No, well, not five of me. There's a big sister, there's me, and then there's another brother, and then there's another sister, and then there's another brother. That's um, so anyway, the chicken story. We, um, Fifey and I, both share a love of poultry chickens and um, he at one time raised guinea fowl commercially for the table. He also, when he was living in Fife, he raised, um, he, you know, he did quail eggs uh, commercially and he delivered them to people in Edinburgh, in the smart parts of Edinburgh. Um, so, yeah, we and I've had chickens like all my life since I was about 18 or 19. Get on with it. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, and, we, and we've always had clockers. I, that's like hens that are, good at, um, that are good at sitting on eggs. And we often put duck eggs underneath a clocker. And what we particularly like to do is when the duck eggs, eggs hatch um, and the ducklings start going around, what we like to do there's a car coming, is um, get a big, uh, something full of water and watch the ducklings get really, really excited, hurl themselves in the water while the hen, the mother goes, no, don't go in there, you must be mad because we all know hens don't swim. Right, I'm going to tip up. I have to pay airfare to get free shit. Uh, mm, you do. But it wasn't a bad deal. Right. So... That was my iris painting. We'll put the veins on tomorrow. Let's have a go. A quick start at the poppies. Tippy, tippy, tippy. So I've got my lovely model. There is a sort of, there's a, uh, like an uppy one. Oh God, that's so beautiful. Right. And this is what I prepared the other day. So I am going to get I don't know what I'm going to do, because that's a car. I'm going to drink my tea. Find my paint. That's good. I've just got to quickly run and see who that is.
could be a delivery, a delivery van. I've ordered some new goggles because the thing about open water swimming is, well, one of the things about open water swimming is um, you've got to have decent goggles and I don't. Well, whoever it was, they've gone. Um, <gasps> Heather, your poppies were really, really nice. They were well observed, beautifully executed. Really like that. Nope, don't really like that. Nope. Oh, you've got to get the right colour, you can't rush these things. I think I like that. Okay, dokey, right. Got to start somewhere. So nice using this like, incredibly uh, intense, just pure colour. And this is quite a crumply up. I can't believe the time. You, you can go if you're bored. Honestly, I really don't mind. I won't be hurt much. Um, right, so then we're... Coming up here with the crumples. I have to concentrate. I'm oh, sorry, I can't do constant chattering and concentrating. So you, you can chat amongst yourselves, I don't mind. Right, it's nice actually. It's okay. Now this one comes up here and then uncrumples up here. <laughs> Fiona Ashford, I keep thinking right now I'm going to try and get the sewing machine going and I'm going to take Fiona up on her offer of trying to work out what the hell is the matter with it. And then I'm sidetracked, something else comes on. This is okay, I'm happy with the way this is going. I hope you would be too. Right, so from down here. And then that goes like that. Oh, I can see what you're saying. What do we do if we see someone creeping up behind? <laughs> I'm not bored. I just got here. I wouldn't be bored anyway. Well, I think you're very tolerant, really. Anyway, when I went to the village to go to the post office and obviously I, I did the whole being more patient than I really am thing. Lovely Jimmy. There's a lovely chap in the village, Jimmy Ballantyne, and he's really not well at the moment. And it's not something he's going to get better from. Uh, and he was sitting with his lovely hat on outside his house where he lives with his lovely wife. And they're both adore their garden. I think something's... Oh, it's a sheep. The sheep are going past. Um, I couldn't just go, oh, I'm too busy to come and say hello to you because I've got my midday thing. So I went and had a chat with him. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to go and have chats with him. He's very thin and He's doing Sudoku and I just, you know, there's something about when people start doing Sudoku. Which 
I'm not very good at, actually. Anyway, he was telling me that his wife, Judy, is exceptionally good at cryptic crosswords, and I am actually exceptionally bad at them. I have no patience, and I don't see the point, frankly. It's like that. there's a programme on the radio where they all have to... They have some ridiculous cryptic thing, and the guy who does the programme... Uh, tries to encourage them and gives them clues and things and the team try and come up with the answer and I just think, well, what's the point? And I actually think that there should be something like Radio 4 but not have things that I don't like on because oh, that's, that, that's alright, isn't it? That's a good start. I'm going to add a bit of intensity, but not with that brush, with another one. Oh yeah, goggles. All goggles leak. All goggles missed up, apparently. And I've tried. I've spent, I mean, not ludicrous amounts of money, but I'll buy anything that's a gimmick that anybody says, oh, this will work. Um, Anyway, I've got another set coming. And they are Zog's Predator. I think that's the make, so I'm really looking forward to, to that. But you only really get one chance with goggles because you put them on and you set off. You can't get halfway around a course or halfway down a river and go, Oh, I think I'll just swap because these ones actually leak. Too late. Um, right. So what you can do, and I've said this before, kind of squint your eyes a little bit, look at your subject and think, actually, I'm never going to make every single part of this look exactly what it is. Um, but what I can do is find those intense areas and focus on them. Because things don't have to look exactly like what they are, but for me... Things like these lovely red poppies, they just, you know, they move me, they move me. They, they, um, they, they, they demand a response. And if I was a singer, I'd probably sing a song about them. And if I was a dancer, I'd probably, like, prance about thinking about them. But I'm not, I'm a painter, so I paint them. I think that's okay, actually, I quite like that. That's a good start for that one. And what I can do is um, just move this, move it around a bit so that I can paint it again but from a different angle up here. I don't know whether you can see. Uh, crinkly winkly. Quite annoying, this paper won't lie flat. Never mind. It's so crumpled, it really is just like a tissue. Slight um, 
problem with the drying here, but that doesn't bother me, I like that sort of thing. What are you talking about? I'm not bored. I love Jimmy, best sweep ever. You know Jimmy Ballantyne, yeah he was. Uh, also a grave digger. I used to have like a mini digger and you'd see him like heading off to Ballingham. But it's been ages since he did that. He was famously in the news once because he had a terrible time. He worked as a, he worked for quite a while as a school bus driver for Snaith's. And I don't think I need to hold all those brushes anymore. I'll just put them there. I'm kind of gripping onto them, but really what I should be doing is, is that. And he was provoked beyond reason by some dreadful boys, like literally beyond reason. Um, and the story, the bare bones of the story sound hideous, but when you know the truth of the matter and what these boys had done, you can see how he was driven to battering them with a hammer and he lost his job. But he's really a very, very mild-mannered, lovely chap. I think driving teenage children in buses must be um, pretty much one of the worst jobs going. And quickly, oh, listen to that lamb, what a racket, I wish it was shut up. This isn't going too badly actually. A friend of mine, Jimmy, who lives at um, Helmsley, who I know through falconry, um, he has raised some Indian runner ducks and he, and they've been printed on him and with it being locked down and with him being like, a complete like, nature boy he's putting up these videos every day which is why Fifey reminded me about the about our our um, hen outrage slash duck swimming story and he puts videos up every day of his Indian runner ducks just uh, doing really outrageously cute things this is a fairly disgusting brush Right, that's a start. And quite frankly, enough. That's more than enough time. I'm not going to be here tomorrow because I'm glad I never needed him for grave digging, I know. I love the sheep and cockers. I think that, yeah, probably has lost it tomorrow. I've never found goggles that don't mist up. If you do, let me know and I'll keep searching. If you find the perfect goggles, let me know. Um, I've literally got the national collection of goggles in my swimming bag out there. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm not here tomorrow. You'll have to make your own entertainment. Um, uh, but I will be here, or will I, on Saturday? Probably will. Anyway. Have a lovely day today 
and tomorrow, and I think I'll probably see you on Saturday, I think so. I'll certainly see two of you on Saturday, I think. Right, bye.